Bob Young here, back at you with another instructional video. This one we're going to determine functions from graphs or from equations. And first we're going to talk about what's called the vertical line test. Now what the vertical line test says is any vertical line touch the graph of a function only once. All right, so it says in this first example, use the vertical line test to determine whether each relation graph is a function. And notice they gave you some ordered pairs here, negative 1, 1, which is in the second quadrant, 0, negative 1, 1, 2, and 4, negative 3. Now, notice all of these points from the last um, instructional video, all of the x values are what? They're different, all right? So let's just go ahead and re relate that here. So this is a huge topic. Again, the x values differing makes it a function because notice no matter where I run a vertical line, it'll never cut any of those more than once. So this would be by the vertical line test a function. Now, our friend the oval we talked about in the last episode is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Notice here that the x values would be what? Cheating. We would have negative 2, 6. Up here, we would have negative 2, negative 6. So again, any graph that fails the vertical line test, the x values will not be different. They'll be cheating, which they can't, and therefore not a function. <laughs> All right, how about our friend the line here? Notice no matter where I run a vertical line, and I could get fun here, and I could get my line tool out, and I'll just run lines. I'll run vertical lines through this thing like crazy. No matter where I run a vertical line, though, it will never cut the graph more than once. So this is a function Y'all don't want one this easy on the test, do you? <laughs> Let's put a whole bunch of these young. Our friend the parabola is also a function. Again, no matter where I run a vertical line, it will never cut the graph more than once. Relations. Graphs that do not represent functions are still relations. So remember that all equations and graph represent relations. Again, relations just being ordered pairs that create some picture, and that all relations have a domain and range, whether they're functions or not. All right, now we're going to look at some of these here. Decide whether each function defines a relation and give the domain and range. Now, notice here we have the graph y equals x plus 4. Now, it says since y is always found by adding 4 to x, each value of x will correspond to just one value of y, and the relation defines a function. So notice in this one, and if we graphed it, I think you all have seen enough graphs, and I'll just put a real cheap graph up here. If we were to put some points in here and graph this, and we're going to do it different ways here, we could go ahead and say, um, if we put 0 in for x, y would be 4, so it would be up here. If we put 1 in for x, y would be 5. And this would really, if we graphed it, be the picture of our friend the line. So notice here it says you can tell a lot by the graph and by noticing that the x and y values were different. So it does say, since it's a line, that we have negative infinity to infinity both for the domain and the range. How about our friend the square root here? Now we've graphed some of these here as we've come along. Now notice what's under the radical can never be negative. So we have to be careful here whenever we do one of these from the past and say 2x minus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. So we can figure out what x value to use first. We could add 1 to both sides. 2x would be greater than or equal to 1, so the first value we would put in for x would be 1 half. But it says for any choice of x in the domain, there is exactly one corresponding value for y, and of course the radical can't be negative, so this would be a function too if you graph it. So you could put all these values of x in um, that are greater than or equal to 1 half, which would all the x's would differ, giving you 
different Y values in this case. And then we've gone ahead and showed that the domain of this would have to be numbers on X, one half or greater. So there it is an interval notation. And because the radical is non-negative number, it just goes on to explain here, as X takes values greater than or equal to one half, Y values will be greater than or equal to zero. So if we actually graph this thing, and we can just go a really quick graph up here. I mean, I'm not making spectacular graphs with really well-ordered points like I like. But if we put one half in for X, Y would be zero, so we would be here. And then as we put more points in, you would see more x values greater than or equal to one half. You'd have a graph that looks something like that. So graphically, it would pass a vertical line test as well. So now we're kind of seeing how equations relate to graphs. All right, now let's check this one out. Decide whether each relation defines a function. Young likes to give plenty of examples here and give the domain and range. Now notice here on y squared equals x, ordered pairs 16, 4, and 16, negative 4 both satisfy this equation. So it's not going to be a function. And if we looked at this here, the domain would be 0 to infinity. So it says any real number can be squared so that the range of the relation is going to be negative infinity to infinity. And again, sometimes I think the graph helps on this one. If we were to graph this putting in X and Y values, what we would have here, and you would see it if you graphed it, is one what I call a lazy parabola. <laughs> he would be laying on his side. So if you put values in here, that's what it would look like, and it would definitely fail the vertical line test. So one thing to look at here is when y has some kind of an even power in an equation, look at it like, hey, this can't be a function because there can be more than one y value going to x. So it would make x automatically not be different and shoot. <laughs> Now, here's another one. Here's an inequality. Decide whether each relation defines a function and so forth. Now, there's no way this thing's going to be a function just because of this inequality. And if you think about it, we've got some shading involved here. So if we graph this creature, we would have this line, and we could start with y equals x minus 1 down here. And they gave us a whole bunch of ordered pairs and stuff. So if I put 0 in for x, y would be negative 1, 1, 0. So I would have this line going here, but with the inequality, you would have to shade one of the regions. And we're going to get to this lesson later when we start messing with inequalities and so forth, but you might have had this in other lessons you've seen. So if I check the point 0, 0 to see whether to shade here, 0, 0 would make this false. See, putting in 0 for y and 0 for x, I would get a false statement. So that tells me I would shade over here. Now, if you don't get this lesson right away. Don't panic. We're going to do this in depth later. But notice if there's a whole shaded region here, holy cow, there's going to be what? That's not a function. Now, let's go ahead and read the solution here. It says the ordered pairs 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 1, negative They all satisfy the inequality. So, I mean, you've got a whole bunch, and they just took numbers in the shaded region there. Notice the x's do not differ. And inequality rarely defines a function. Since any number can be used for x or y, the domain and range is going to be all real numbers. See, in that shade of region, it'll go on forever and ever that opposite direction. And one last example before we roll on. Decide whether this is a function or so forth. Now, it says substituting any value in for x and subtracting 1 and then dividing it into 5 produces exactly 1y one value of y for each value in the domain. So this does define a function, and we're even going to graph these creatures later on. Okay. Now notice there are some forbidden numbers for x, like you can't put x is 1 in there, or you'll have an undefined fraction here. So fractions, you have to make sure that no number or numbers cause any denominator to be 0. And 1 is that forbidden creature here. So next to 1 down here, I'm going to come down. Once we set that bottom equal to 0 and solve, I'm going to say, hmm, x can't be 1. 
So they said the domain then, X could be any other number. I mean, if we put two in here for X, see, let's just do that for fun. We'll put two in here for X would give us Y is five. And we could make a whole list of ordered pairs and so forth. So notice the X values must be um, every number except one, and here's how you write that in interval notation. Every number except one is written negative infinity to one, and notice the parentheses here, does not include union one to infinity, does not include one. And then the range, when you put enough X values in, you would see Y would be any number except zero. So I hope this helped. Graphically determining a function and doing it with equations, domains, and ranges, Bob Young signing off. We'll see you on the next instructional video.